Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. And it's terrible, it's a national tragedy. Nothing like this has happened in over two decades. But my only request to all the political parties, and I say this very, very humbly, to all the political parties with folded hands, don't do politics right now. Imran Khan is being, you know, his, his rights are being taken away and the Pakistan Tehreek and Saab was one, one last hope for Pakistan and it's being dismantled. They'll say all of that. Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. I will start by offering condolences to the 288 countrymen, Indians who have lost their lives in that terrible, terrible accident in Orissa. And uh, also, uh, according to media reports, more than 900 people who have been very severely injured. I pray for their recovery. And uh, I think... Uh, Prime Minister Modi has gone there already. He's made a statement that we'll find out, we'll get to the bottom of this and uh, the guilty will be punished. More than that, I think also what we need to do is rehabilitation of those who have been injured because many would have been uh, the sole bread earners of the families and uh, you know, what does the family do without them? That is one thing that the government uh, will, I think, look into. Another thing that the government will ideally uh, or should do is compensations have been uh, uh, you know announced for those who have died, who have lost their lives, uh, that is one part of it. You know, also getting to the bottom of why this uh, dastardly accident happened, why this terrible, terrible accident happened and booking the people who are actually guilty for this accident. So uh, that is all uh, happening as we speak. And I hope uh, that the other part, you know, taking care of the injured, the sole bread earners, that will also be looked after. Now, I have, I have a comment to make here. And my comment is, you know, I see a lot of politics happening around this incident. And it's terrible, it's a national tragedy. Nothing like this has happened in over two decades. But my only request to all the political parties, and I say this very, very humbly, to all the political parties with folded hands, don't do politics right now. You know, it, it, uh, it, it's not in good taste. I mean, we have suffered a tragedy. And uh, people are mourning. The nation is mourning. Uh, Odisha has declared a day of mourning. And... Uh, whether the other states have declared it or not is, is immaterial because everybody is extremely upset about this. And I think uh, uh, what has happened, uh, you know, nobody is interested in brushing it under the carpet. The guilty will be punished. But as I said, ladies and gentlemen, the nation is in mourning and I don't think we should try to score political brownie points. It doesn't behove us as a people. And our politicians are better than this. Whether they are part of the ruling dispensation or the opposition, we are better than this. So I don't think we should do that. I, I look at, I see TV debates on channels and I see the same name calling. You know, that you did this and we did this and during our time and during your time and all that. So I think this must stop. There are, it's not just about, uh, you know, uh, 288 people who have lost their lives. More than 1000 people have been impacted by this accident and those families have been shattered. So coming to the television studio or... Uh, you know, spewing poison on social media. I think this, this must stop. Uh, that is one thing. And another news, very interesting, I have for you is, Ruchira Kamboj, who's our, uh, you know, a permanent representative to the United Nations, she said that uh, the current UN Security Council structure does not align with multipolar world. And India has again urged for United Nations Security Council reforms. I'll tell you why this is important. I'll read out the statement first, and then I'll explain uh, the current composition of the Security Council no longer aligns with the realities of our interconnected and multipolar world. The council structure designed in a different era does not reflect the rise of new powers, the shifting geopolitical landscape and the aspirations of nations striving uh, for a fairer and more equitable global order. She said while reiterating India's stand. This is, uh, this is uh, you know, Ruchira Kamboj, who's the permanent representative, India's representative to the United Nations. Now, I'd like to say two, three things. This whole United Nations Security Council thing happened actually long, long back. It happened after the Second World War, right? And uh, it was created immediately, the United Nations and the United Nations Security Council after the Second World War and uh, in, its, in its current uh, form. Now, at that point in time, they said that five countries should be the permanent members. But so much has changed, you know. So much has changed. 
at that time in 1945 the top power in the world was great britain in 1945 britain ruled i don't know very significant portions of the earth india was under british rule at that point in time india was a colony so many others i mean britain has ruled france had many many colonies america was emerging as a power russia russia had emerged as a power was spreading its wings communism was taking root across various various countries in the world the sphere of influence was growing i'm talking immediately after after you know hitler died and the second world war ended you know tokyo uh, had surrendered the emperor had surrendered because of hiroshima and nagasaki and uh, hitler had died and all these events led to the final you know collapsing of uh, the 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 forces of hitler and his and his supporters what i'm trying to say here is something different you know the reality at that time was totally different ladies and gentlemen it was a totally different reality the reality today is different today india is the fifth largest economy in the world at that time india accounted for nothing i mean i don't even know if india was among the top 20 or top 30 economies of the world india has grown so much since independence grown by leaps and bounds we have almost eradicated extreme poverty we have poor people in india no doubt but we have almost eradicated extreme poverty india is the fifth largest economy the most populous nation on earth by many counts people say that it's overtaken china as the most populous nation on earth so so here's the thing you know the united nations security council does not reflect today's reality it reflects the reality of 1945 and this is what india is saying must change so much has changed in the world internet has come in you know we have social media now we have different kinds of media electronic media electronic media was extremely limited at that point in time i mean all you had was black and white films and uh, with voice overs you know but today everything has changed the world has changed and the reality is that india is the world's pharmacy india is the world's software capital india is the economy that is going to very soon become the fourth largest economy in the world india has a world class military and the aspirations of the indian people are different now you can't keep india away just because china is blocking uh, that move every now and then you know china gets up and says because china is afraid of india's rise that is the only way i can i can sort of describe china's behavior in the united nations security council uh, th- there's one more news about us and china very important that we all should know about is you know us defense chief he's telling china you know lloyd austin he says that uh, he is deeply concerned by china's unwillingness to engage on military crisis management warning that the talks are key to avoiding conflict and he said the relationship between the united states and china is at its lowest point in decades as they remain deeply divided over everything from the sovereignty of taiwan to espionage and territorial disputes in the south china sea speaking at the shangri la dialogue asia's top security summit austin said that the open lines of communication between us and china defense and military leaders were essential in avoiding conflict and bolster stability in the Indi- asia pacific i'm deeply concerned that the prc people's republic of china has been unwilling to engage more seriously on better mechanisms for crisis management between our two militaries you know on 30th of may china rejected us request for meeting of the defense chiefs us said defense chiefs must meet see now let me tell you two three things china is a growing power and china looks at america as a declining power something like the last days of the roman empire or if you've read a little bit of history now where china is coming from is china believes it is negotiating from the position of strength and the way the americans are going about their job the way the americans are doing their work or the way the americans are projecting american strength it looks more like projecting weakness all the time it does not look like they are projecting strength americans are living on past glory you know we did this and we did that china doesn't care why should you ask china for what china doesn't care about your safety mechanisms china doesn't care for the fact that you want a meeting so that no conflict erupts between between america and china you want to avoid it china is itching for it china is itching to take you on why don't you understand this china is provoking you china is saying yeah let's 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 do it 
because china knows that they have single minded dedication they have unity of leadership your president i i'm sorry i should not be saying these things but your president can't stand for half an hour he falls down he fell down again at a military parade you need a strong leadership you need a ruthless leadership you know you want to get involved everywhere in the world and today why are you not involved because you feel that the world no longer respects you as the world's policeman the dollar you know is declining day by day more and more countries are saying we want to deal in our currencies hell with the dollar where is american respect and on top of that you want to go and tell the chinese that hey talk to us and tomorrow you know let's let's have a mechanism in place so there is no war between us the chinese read this not as common sense the chinese do not read this as a human gesture the chinese read this as a sign of helplessness on the part of america and they will react accordingly right so if you want chinese respect please understand the chinese respect strength if you actually want chinese respect if you want china to take a step back you must cause and i'm talking about the americans here and i'm talking to the americans here if you want chinese respect you must cause harm to china without causing harm to china china will not respect you they don't believe in talks they don't believe in they call their diplomats wolf warriors they call them warriors these are people who would have taken a gun but they are constrained by diplomatic niceties and they have to talk therefore they are talking otherwise they'll be very happy taking a gun to the table chinese are increasingly belligerent increasingly aggressive and america is not helping because america is now kowtowing to the chinese you've gone soft america you've gone so soft you you must understand that if you want to be the sole superpower you have to shed blood whether it's your own or the enemy's you have to shed blood you have to take the fight to the chinese do something that rattles the chinese and they'll talk about it they'll write in the global times you know they'll threaten they'll scream they'll shout but in the end they will recognize american power but if you behave like weaklings china is going to be at your throat it's already at your throat and today you're begging for talks saying please talk to us please talk to us and that does not impress china that emboldens china and china is going to come after you we indians realize because we have fought with china twice and we understand that china respects power if you can put as many troops as china along the line of actual control if you can put as many aircraft as many artillery guns as many transport aircraft as many rockets then china will talk to you with respect but you you're talking about peace to china a country that does not believe in peace you know it claims territories of 23 countries china actually claims land including india it claims land from 23 countries thank god and i mean good for you that they're not claiming new york yet but they will soon they'll come after you too okay another news from from china is that uh, you know china says that it created an aircraft a passenger aircraft called the c919 and it took its first commercial flight and beijing has called the aircraft as first large homegrown passenger jet and this is a prominent symbol of beijing's broader made in china strategy a campaign to reduce national reliance on foreign manufacturers uh but instead of boosting china's global stature i'm reading from this news article it's very very interesting by the way but instead of boosting china's global stature in technology innovation experts say that the c919 is a symbol of its continued reliance on the west that's because a large chunk of the plane's parts come from foreign suppliers predominantly in north america and europe chinese state media has said about 40% of the model's components are imported though experts say that the real problem or the real proportion i beg your pardon is much higher the c919 is unique in that almost nothing that keeps it in the air is from china said scott kennedy Scott Kennedy spent 2 years leading a team that researched China's decades long efforts to develop its own its own commercial aircraft. The C919 is primarily a non-Chinese airplane with Chinese paint on it. So the Americans are dismissive they said that anything that keeps this aircraft in the air is non-Chinese and all that is Chinese about this aircraft is the paint. Sounds very similar to Pakistani missiles no? the Gauri Ghaznavi and all these missiles that Pakistan has. the only thing pakistani about those missiles is the paint yeah the green paint and the white you know half moon and 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 the 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 star and 
you know the other things that the pakistani run those words in urdu and we'll do this and we'll do that only that part that 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 nonsense is pakistani the rest of the missile is chinese now about the c919 aircraft that is what the americans are saying you know you're going to town you're telling the world that hey we have created this world class passenger aircraft wide body you know and we want to t- take on airbus and we want to take on boeing but the fact of the matter is whatever keeps this aircraft in the air whatever technology keeps this aircraft in the air is not chinese technology and when if the chinese invented anything by the way except for paper and gunpowder the chinese are zero the only thing chinese know is is how to steal so st- stealing intellectual property is something that is very close to the chinese hearts and friends and another news item from pakistan and how can we not discuss pakistan we discuss pakistan in the last news item uh the pakistani military says that uh, you know it tells the media people of pakistan that don't cover imran khan and apparently in islamabad uh, these military officers and ispr everybody they called a meeting they called all the uh, heads of studios and all the media owners and all that and all the top journalists they called them for a meeting and they told them listen yeah you're not covering imran khan imran khan will not come on television that's it you will not cover imran khan and these are orders this is not like a request from the military because obviously the pakistani army only requests when is dealing with a foreign military otherwise when dealing with its own people it orders so it ordered and here is one journalist who does not want to be named who said that you know we have to listen to these guys they control everything in pakistan they have they have videos of uh, people they have uh, proof of wrong doing so they blackmail media houses they blackmail media houses right and they can make people disappear if they don't have proof they'll just make somebody disappear you know like uh, they made imran riaz khan disappear they just made him disappear we don't know where he is now some people say he's in afghanistan but afghanistan is a way of saying that we can't get him back because who goes into afghanistan nobody afghanistan is the badlands of the world yeah nobody goes to afghanistan so this is exactly what uh, 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 these guys have told their own media houses you will not cover imran khan they can stop print circulation of newspapers those physical newspapers they can stop it you know they, they can lift people from the roads you, your top anchors will disappear for 3 days and when they come back after 3 days they'll come back with a few broken bones and properly chastised or or they can simply revoke your licenses a, a brigadier or a major general of the pakistani army can call up pemra and say that uh, tomorrow the stop media house i want them you know not airing content any content at all shut down that media house for one month it's been done in pakistan it's it's no big deal for the military to pick up the phone and say shut it down they'll shut out the entire media so this is the deal here in pakistan that you will not cover imran khan you will not show imran khan because quote unquote the legend of imran khan must die they're trying to uh, they're trying to erase imran khan from public memory not realizing that social media exists and there are many many imran khan followers outside the country how will you stop them how will you stop some rich pakistanis you know going on television or influential pakistanis or or uh, you know pakistanis who who can speak who are imran khan supporters if they are called by channels in london they will go and they will talk and they will say that uh, you know this is what is happening in pakistan and imran khan is being imran khan is being you know his his rights are being taken away and the pakistan tehreek e insaf was one one last hope for pakistan and it's being dismantled they'll say all of that and there are people youtubers who are going to do that so you can't you can't erase somebody from public memory nowadays it's not so easy uh, you know but uh, this is what the pakistani military is saying that at least from the formal media there should be no mention of imran khan so ladies and gentlemen i hope you like this video and you like this fancy new mic which i got do do let me know how the sound quality is i'll be looking forward to your feedback and uh, thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for watching this video if you like this video press like subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon jai hind vande mataram bharat mata ki jai